The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow, and a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, we the believers have been given the completed canon of scripture into our hands. Not only the completed canon of scripture, but rather we have been given the great truth which directs us, leads us, and guides us, and causes us to be aware of the true purpose of our survival on this earth, even after salvation. But some morons who call themselves as Christians, they do not even know whether they have been really saved or what. They do not even realize to the point of death when they could be realized that Lord Jesus Christ was the one who was indwelling in them as a Shekinah glory. This great Shekinah glory is most important for us. And this great Shekinah glory is the only one person after your death you will see literally if you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the key point. If you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, indwelling Trinity indwells in you. But this great truth has been ignored and they want to write speculations about one's eternal security and they want to tease them, doubt them and tell them that they are not been literally saved. And this is what it is happening in the trends of pulpits today, dear brethren. Many men they have come around not only having proper knowledge into the pulpits but rather being directed by demons and devilly worship services. They are going varied upon varied thoughts as if a girl in a dream a Iranian girl has seen God, Jesus, in her dream. And this is not a thing which they should speculate and tell. Jesus will be made known to each and everyone in the end days. And this is not the criteria as well. Some men they have counted in London's newspaper that the angel has fallen from heaven. And that angel was looking like a man and having some wings placed upon his head. Even this is also a big speculative thing which they are not capable of comprehending. The way they are leading away astray without having truth in their lives has really caused once again for the pastor in the pulpit to rightly divide the word of truth. And this is what, dear brethren, if you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, your duty is to rightly divide the word of truth. Your duty is to study thoroughly the word of God and look upon Bible doctrine. So in, fact, in fact, even this man, they have come, they do not even know the revelation how Lord revealed to the Old Testament saints. The way he was causing them to make known the whole Bible. It was first the spoken word, and then through dreams, and then through visions, and then what we are handling right now in our hands by the angel of Jehovah teaching, who is none other but Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These were the four methods when the Old Testament scripture had been revealed to us, in that the dreams were one of the occasions where Lord would come and communicate to them. The visions, though they are still consciously alive, they would see the visions. But that's not the point with this Iranian girl who was a Muslim one and now she has been converted and strongly she is moving into Christ. Exactly the same pattern, dear brethren. When we were having the discussion concerning to the point, how can a man really believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he can be saved? The man who is in need, the man who is in urge, the man who really requires desperately can really know what it is to believe in Christ. For example, in Pauline and Silvers, when they have been put in jail in Acts chapter 16, the centurion was having the real desperate position to kill himself. And when he realized that they have not been gone out, but rather they are still there and they asked him not to kill himself. And then he says, you are really from God. And tell me what I have to do to save myself and my whole family. Then they said, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And not only you, your entire household. Dear brethren, until and unless you could reach to that point of repentance, until and unless you could reach to that point of status quo to realize and to understand, to believe in the 
the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is your desperate position. To believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is your utmost requirement. As you cannot get along without breathing for more than three or four minutes, how desperately you will be looking for the oxygen. So likewise, you should be desperately seeking the true God, the true God, the true eternal life. There is life after death even as well. But many people think they will perish off. Many people will think after their death, they is gone. And in fact, even some people, they come and they tell, learning the doctrines of Christadelphians from the Oksu Park, or in fact, when Elis Aniano, they want to tell the things very clearly. In fact, even by Zachary Naik, there is no life after death. And we have come as a spirit, and the spirit of the Lord was breathed into our nostrils, and there is no soulish life, nor the spiritual life after our death. And we just go back to the mud, and the words which have been breathed into our nostrils, it is a spirit of word of God, and they will go back to heaven. Dear brethren, from where the spirit comes, from where the spirit goes, no one knows. As the wind comes and goes, you do not know, but you will feel that breeze. Exactly there is a spiritual life. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has manifested that even after his death. That is what Thanatos and the Necros, the two, that's what he did on the cross, willingly offering himself. And he went to the lower parts of the earth to set free gifts for those people and set free from the bondage of the paradise and lead them into heaven after he was been ascended into Christ, after he was ascended into the throne room of Lord. The way exactly it shows, even after death there is life. Even the conscious soul of the Luke chapter 16, where there was a parable between the rich man and the, the, and the Lazarus. Even there you know they are consciously aware. Even Isaiah very clearly tells in 66 chapter of him, in the, dying in, the, in the dying declaration of his words, he tells to them very clearly, we shall see them as dead corpuses. So dear brethren, even after your death there is a life. It is not like these Christadelphians who think there is no life. So you need to be desperately looking for your eternal life. You need to be desperately seeking for your life after death. And that is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told in one of his Gospels as well. Those who live in me and believe in me will never see that. And those who die, that means those who are spiritually dead, and they believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, though they die, they shall live with me. The same passage for us, those who live in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that believe in Christ, they shall never see death. So the same passage, what we are telling to you again and again, desperately, who are the ones who are going to be believed? The one who really requires. The centurion knew, if he would have not safely safeguarded those two, that is Paul and Silas, he would have clearly put up behind the bars, and he would have had a tough time in his life, and he thought better to go through that persecution by the Romans, better for me to kill myself, and he took a sword to draw unto himself, but... Paulus and Silas called him and told, no, don't do that, we have not gone anywhere, we are here. And then, you know, that's the point when you will realize a man coming and giving you repletion, the man coming and replatizing you, the man coming and giving to you the new way, then you will realize, yes, really, these are the men of God and they have come to save me. And that's the procedure what you need to understand. And that is the procedure a man who can really believe being a Roman soldier or a Roman centurion, what authority you used to have. And he said, I believe in your word. And that belief is what? Believe in the Lord and Savior. This Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That is what today we are not able to find in the pulpits, the breeded Christians, if not the men who want to come around to the Christianity, born in Christian families, or the one who want to be converting, the one who have been converting into Christianity, I do not use the word actually convert, but the one who believe in the Lord should be the right word and the right terminology. It is not as if the point of acquittal that they can understand when they are converting because they are just thinking this is also one form of religion okay if that God doesn't work let me go through this God at least to this God I can get they are coming only with the pain not to really believe like that Roman centurion who was supposed to kill himself but rather they are coming here because when they convert they can they can get good appreciation from the churches they can get good money from the churches they can go, they can get whatsoever they want from the churches and that's what they are getting as a conversion into Christianity but not for the truth and not for the reality of Christ if they are really for the truth they will be desperately seeking enough to know Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they will be desperately looking to know what is the thrill that we have in each and every word of the exegesis they will be desperately looking to know what it is to write a copy of a book of a law a copy of a book of a Bible doctrine a copy of a book of the things which have been quite essentially required they will be desperately known what is the ministry of getting down upon the knees and looking upon the Baraka are looking upon the barrack of worshipping the Lord because that great Lord lives in truth, in judgment and in righteousness. They will be seeking for the truth and without truth there is no proper 
edification of the soul, dear brethren. It is not looking through dreams or visions or illusions or speaking in tongues or doing miracles or healings. It is the real edification. That is satanic to the core. Dear brethren, when we have been completed the canon of scripture, they are no longer into the views of the defunct spiritual gifts, like the prophets who have done their work and they have gone. The apostles, they have done their work, they have gone. And they have now given to us the entire Bible doctrine. And now we have only permanent spiritual gifts. What they are? We have the pastor, teacher, and the evangelist, the gift of administration, giving, helping, and hospitality. These are the gifts which Lord ordains his body through the polishing pep sauce of the word. And if there is no sub sauce, very clearly P-S-E-P-H, P-S-E-P-H-O-S, that is what to rub, to polish with the water and to cleanse them with the water, then you are not going to get out the acquittal attitude from the court that you have been taken out from the white table or white stone till to the black stone. Black stone was been casually used for the condemnation or calamity, but whereas white stone was been used as purity, the same thing what we find in Revelation 2 6, the one who overcomes, the one who overcomes. Now we are in a process of overcoming. We have already been cleansed once. That's what our Lord told to Peter as well. Taking bath once is enough, but cleansing of the hands is required. The cleansing of the hands and the legs to enter into fellowship with him is a rebound. Until and unless we get back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty and learn the word of the Lord under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot be going through the process of becoming a pure pebble unto Christ. The pure pebble, the one who can have this white board, telling to the point he has reached to the status quo of edification complex of the soul. And that edification complex of the soul is not being done when you speak in tongues. You may be sheer out of morality, you may be good as well as comparing to the other members of the religion of this world, but as far as when it's compared to Bible doctrine, since the defunct spiritual gifts is no longer into use, you have been blasphemed by Satan through the Angastamutas demand which control your vocal cards. And this demand controlling vocal cards, number one, followed by the prophets, <clears throat> number one, followed by the end of the canon of the scripture by the Pentecostal crowds, and followed by so many people today all over the world, they have been rejecting Bible doctrine, and they're going to such kind of an allusions where they see an Iranian woman has seen Christ Jesus in her dream, and one person tells in London newspaper they have seen an angel falling from the heaven, and they could even catch that angel into a net, and that angel doesn't even look like a single man, but rather he looks like a man who has been dead. Does not the Bible tell to you the angelic creation, how does it appear? Does not the Bible teach to you how does the angels who have been disappearing and appearing to man, not in the form of a human body? But this man, they want to speculate and they want to rise and they want to tell the end is coming near. The end will come when the time will come and the Lord knows when the time will be. We are not here to worry about our time. The end may be for so many people today, this second itself, the reason that they may not be alive. That death is your promotion. The end is not the rapture. Lord knows the suitable time. The end for you is when you preach the entire word from Revelation, Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, and you put an end, amen, there. That's the end for you in your life. Do not worry about the things of the speculation that are going around in this world. Such kind of a rumors will come. Such kind of a battles will come, saith our Lord. And we are not able to comprehend the great battle that is happening in our soul. This great battle which you and I need to understand, dear brethren. This great truth which you and I need to comprehend, dear brethren. The battle is the angelic conflict, the unseen angelic conflict. And it won't end. Satan knows very well that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And you will never even care for it. You do you know the reason why? Because you have been made positionally superior and you have been termed out as alakainiketesis in the spiritual spaces. And you are new spiritual spaces in Christ of this unique dispensation of the church age. And I am not a dispensationalist, as many people think. I am telling to you all the truth can be divided by dispensations alone. The tags, what the people call, I don't care. The way they criticize, I don't care. The truth is the truth and we need to lay down whether you take it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not. Church age is a deadlock for the prophecy. There is no prophecy period in the church age. Church age is a trend of historical trends. Do not align with the Revelation chapter 4 verses 19 into the church. Do not get back the Old Testament into the church. The Old Testament tithes, rituals are not being there in the church. It is not a period of tithes. Church age is a period of pure doctrine. And that's why Lord calls us Alekeniketesis, new spiritual spaces. We have been given the much variegated wisdom of God to preach and to communicate the truth. 
The pastors can edify the church only through one procedure, which is to edify them by teaching isagogical, categorical, and exegetical information, and there is no other method, no other technique, no other procedure, dear brethren. Isagogical method, isagogical method, isagogical method. But this man, they don't want to know the truth. They want to go for jumping, dancing in the emotion. And they want to tell they have been really, really, really praising the Lord when they speak in tongues. But they never knew they are doing a demonic activity when the Angastamutas demon controls their vocal cords. The same pattern which happened in Corinth over the devil known as Darkus, Yarkus, and Idle Stone. And the way they blaspheme, my Lord. Since Lord is gracious, grace precedes judgment. He's still falling, or he's still looking upon that sort of blasphemous worship. If my Lord would have been the same jealous one, to act instantly as he did when Miriam had jealousy over Moses, when the Korah Dathan people rebelled against Lord, when the own sons of Aaronitic priesthood rebelled against Christ to give him an offering. Though these incidents have been recorded for us, this man, they don't want to change their worship because they have been blinded. Blinded from the biblical truth. Blinded from the possibilities of Bible doctrine. Blinded from the exegesis of original word. They have been ruined themselves. They have been ruined their lives. They have been ruined in each and everything which Bible doctrine demands them not to be ruined by knowing the truth. Why? No exposition of the truth. No revelation of Bible doctrine in the pulpits. What do they want? Stimulus of their soul, stimulus of their mental satisfaction to be done. That's it they want. And whenever you go for the truth, do you know what difference does it make when you look in the exegesis and in the translations of KJV or NIV or any other translation you take? You don't get that essence. You will really fear for Jehovah because each and every word what you are preaching in lines upon lines, if it is not in alignment with his mind, how much of doctrine you have been devastating to them and how much of doctrine you have been during from them. And do you think my Lord has just left the things in the original languages like that and emphasizes upon the original languages like that? When Lord told in the Gospel of John chapter 1 verses 18, Exegiomai, no man has seen God, but the one who has come from God the Father, he is the one who has revealed to us the truth. And what do you mean to say thereby? Exegiomai! Exposition, exegesis of the word. And every word is infallible and inerrant, dear brethren. The modesty should answer you that you have not done exegesis. You have not known the truth. You have not known the value of Bible doctrine. Nor you have been here to understand that great truth which Lord has given for us in eternity past. And this men who are coming into the pulpits today, no importance for biblical exegesis, or isagogical, or categorical explanation of the word, but they want to come for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley into this ministry, fearing the softness of this world, looking upon the technology end of this world. One pastor, when I met, he tells to me, the next generation or the next next gen, next generation of the generation which is going to come, they will not believe in the Bible, because they want evidence, they want proof. The Bible itself, which is, which is existing, that alone is the evidence, that alone is the proof. It is not a religious textbook. It is the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ speaks alively for us from the original languages of the scriptures. When Lord mentioned through Apostle Peter, long back that this earth will be melted in fervent heat. Even the technology what has come today, the combustion of the gases put together cannot know how the earth could be melted off. They think it should be either through nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. Even greater than that may come in the future evidences. But with nuclear fission and nuclear fusion also, the earth could be easily melted off. These words were been written when? Long back in the first century AD. But by whom? That's what they fail to understand the Bible. It has been written by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the doctrine of inspiration of the scriptures. And that is God breathing of the scriptures. And what is that inspiration? It is inhale and then exhale. 
you inspire and expire. That's a breathing process. That's the right word for the Theonostas in the Greek. But this man, they don't want to know the truth. Nor they want to know the origin of the scriptures. And they think they want to look for the evidence in the future generations. The future trends look upon generations. And Bible cannot be taught. Moran is idiot. He is an idiot because he doesn't value the importance of the original languages of the scriptures. He is a moron because he has been minded with the scientific, philosoph scientific technology that is going around and social engineering and the philosophical trends that have been coming to pulpit today rather than true exegesis of the word. No matter what it is, the word of the Lord alone shall reign forever and forever. Heaven and earth may perish, but not his word, said the Lord. The duty for us is not to look upon these speculative things, but rather to be aware of the cunning fables of Satan. We are not to be ignorant of these things, but rather we need to be cognizant of biblical truth. We need to be cognizant of Bible doctrine. We need to be cognizant of the words of Christ should be penned around in us, in our heart. If you are not able to understand this simple dogmatical truths, dear brethren, never you will realize what is the importance of biblical preaching in the pulpit, biblical exegesis in the pulpit, biblical isological study in the pulpit. Lord, help you when you appear at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brethren. This is a great source, great truth. And this is what we are being given in this world. And apart from this, we don't have any other truth in this world. Religion-minded textbooks may come. A duplication of the copy of Bible may come. The Roman Catholicism worships may come. But we have the completed canon of Scripture in 66 books. And we have, above all, we have the mentor ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. Only when we are in the con controlling power ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, He shall reveal us unto all the truth. And we are having the guide as a mentor or as a teacher, none other but Ladgar, the Holy Spirit. And if you're not having that, your life is ruined. Your purpose in this earth has been ruined. And your attitude towards Christ is also being ruined. Seek unto the ministry, true ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, who has already cleansed us for the praise of his glory in his grace. In the next day we shall continue our discourse. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for you for very simple, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And whereas for the believers, the marriage is very clear, grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by searching the scriptures diligently. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the marriage is very clear, preach the word, Kerasothon Lagan, be prepared in season or out of season, so that you shall know. The diamond from a witnesses, the indwelling one, Bible in our hands, and the hearers being our witnesses. And if there are no hearers, do not worry. It is Lord God the Father who shall make us, besides nature, the entire angelic host as being our witnesses. But we need to do the work, faithfully carry down the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders by rightly dividing the word of truth, by not fearing the softness of this world, like the ecclesiastical displeasures, the fellow man ostracism, or for the income that could be cut off, and you can tell there are no speaking in tongues. The truth, the truth, and the truth alone. And the truth alone shall reign forever and forever. And you shall know the doctrine. The doctrine shall set you free. And if you do not know the doctrine, you are a bond slave to your own old sin nature attitude. And you are a bond slave to your morality work. And you are a bond slave to your own physical lust pattern with the majority of the people they go. And always remember, majority of the people are always wrong. Doctrine alone is always right. As not our Lord said, the road which leads to heaven is a narrow one, not a broad one. Broad one is pleasurous, but narrow one is very hard to follow through. And we have been called in that narrow by making straight paths to the Lord. And straight paths is nothing but rebound and getting into fellowship with Christ. So which way you go, you decide. Next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it as a blessing and challenge, Father. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.